Welcome to the Comic Hall and Roundtable Discussion for this week. I am Matt Odom, L. Rainey, and Xavier Randall. We are here. Uh, got our top ten list for this week. We're going to talk about new comics that were released, a little speculation, what might be <coughs> heating up, uh, stuff that you might want to find, and we'll also talk about what's going on elsewhere in the world of pop culture. Uh, hopefully, uh, Larry uh, join in tonight. Uh, maybe Vincent will slip in a little later. But let's get this show on the road. Last week we were talking about video games, and we decided that we were going to do our top ten fighting games for this week, and top ten, excuse me, top ten, top fifteen, excuse me, fighting games of all time. So uh, I'll go ahead and fire this thing off, man. Uh, I'm almost for certain each of us are going to have these games in there. It's just going to be spread out throughout different ways, which is uh, always uh, unique when it comes to something that everybody's into, because everybody places value on different things in a different way. So, number 15 on my list is uh, Dark Stalkers. I'm not sure if, you know, if y'all, yeah, yeah, I see Al now that smile. <laughs> what? Man, Dark Stalkers, man. I wish they re revise it. Revitalize you know, they actually, it. They were actually supposed to, uh, Redo that. As a matter of fact, they were looking at doing it in HD. I know. I don't know if it was on HD or not. On, uh, I'm, I'm not sure if it ever if it ever came to fruition. But they were talking about doing an X, HD version of a uh, Star War, Star uh, Dark Stalkers. So that that's something that uh, I would like to see. That, that was a game I actually played late, late in the uh, in the game, man. I, I kind of got into Dark Stalkers late after uh, seeing Morgan and and uh, Marvel's Capcom 2. And MC used to always talk about. John Talbain, and so I when it's <laughs> so I used to talk about it, John Talbain, and yeah. so uh, I actually went and I was I was uh, actually have visiting somebody up in Atlanta, and I ran across it in the arcade, and uh, I thought that the music animations that I, I kind of could see exactly where uh, Marvel vs. Capcom two actually kind of you know it's almost if if they have didn't have Marvel vs. Capcom they had Marvel vs. Dark it would literally be Dark Stalkers because it's pretty much the same except it's just Marvel is a little bit more over the top. Mm -hmm. Number 14. Uh, this was hard, man. This one was hard. I had to figure out where I wanted to put it. But I put 14 uh, is Street Fighter Alpha 3. Uh, I still have nightmares about Fat Bison. <laughs> uh, number 13 is Rival Schools. Uh, Y'all, I'm going to have to take this call. <laughs> Y'all go ahead. Xavier, go ahead and go to the list. I'll catch up with you in just a second. Hello? Yeah. Mute it out, man. Mute it out. Right, you want me to go or you want to go ahead and go? You go ahead and go. All right. My number 15, I thought he had said top 20 last week, so I did 20. Right, go. go ahead and roll with it, man. All right. So, don't laugh, but number 20, I actually got Mortal Kombat X. Okay. I, I, I'm, I'm really enjoying this game right now. Uh, number 19, Pit Fighter. I don't know if you remember that one. <laughs> oh, that's our game. <laughs> had the bodybuilders, man, and they were fighting pits and stuff. Okay. Yeah, I, I had to go back on that one, brother. Yeah, you did. Number 18, I have Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Tournament Fighters. Mm -hmm. I put in too many hours on that game, brother. Mm -hmm. Number 17, Samurai Showdown. Number 16, Karate Champ. Me and Doe used to put in some work on that game, brother. Karate Champ, Karate Champ. Is that... That's not the one that no, that was Kung Fu on the Nintendo with uh, Thomas, wasn't it? Mm-hmm. It's, yeah, okay. it's, right. it's virtually the same game. Okay. I got gotcha. you. Um, if I'm not mistaken, the arcade was called um, Karate Champ, but the game was um, what you just said. I, damn, I can't remember the name of it. Is that the one where they had where they um, you had to hit the button to chop the boards and stuff, kind of like yeah. test your mic? Yeah. Okay, yeah, 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 I remember that one. Yes, sir. Uh, number 15, I have Mortal Kombat 2. Okay. I, had to, I had to throw that one in there. Uh, number 14, Soul Calibur 2. 
Number 13, I put Soul Blade in there. Okay. Number 12, Tech and Tag. Tech and Tag changed it for me, man. Tech and Tag, man, when it came out, it was um, it was pretty cool because it pretty much just opened up the floodgates. The only characters, correct me if I'm wrong, was Dr. Boskanovich in Tech and Tag or no? Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. Him and Gun were the only two. Remember Gun from Tekken 3, the little dinosaur? Right. They were the only two that were missing. But yeah, that was a good game. Very good game. Number 11, Street Fighter Alpha 2. My number 10, King of Fighters 97. Number 9, The First Dead or Alive. Number 8, Art of Fighting. Okay, so pause right now. Art of fighting. What was it about that game that put that you? I'm just asking a question. What was it about that game that you put on your list? So, sentimental value, right? Mm-hmm. You know, you know, Doe is a lot older than me. He's seven years older than me. Right, right, right. And he used to whoop up on me on all these different games and whatnot, right? <laughs> yeah. Art of fighting. He used to beat the brakes off of me in that game, and I sat in the lab. I'm talking about I sat in the lab, and I practiced, and I practiced, and I practiced, and he could not beat me after I got out the lab. Oh, yeah? Mm-hmm. That, believe it or not, that is when he started bringing me to Aladdin Castle. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Uh, yeah. No, 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 no. Not in 97, no. That was way back when. That's when he... um. That's when he stopped bringing me over to his crib to play that game. My bad. Not the last castle. Okay. Um, <laughs> it's a, the, um, damn, what game was it that brought me to Aladdin Castle? Street Fighter. Street Fighter. Okay. Yeah, that's when he started bringing me to Aladdin Castle because I started dominating him in that. Right, right. I think Street Fighter really brought a whole lot of people, man, to the arcade during that time. Mm-hmm. Number seven, Fatal Fury 2. Hmm. Fatal Fury and Art of Fighting was damn near the same game. Right. They had the same well, characters. I, it did. You know what actually threw me off for Art of Fighting, though? Art of Fighting, man, it seemed like they were trying to be different than um, the Street Fighter, of course. Mm-hmm. But it, it seemed like... I, I, for what what I couldn't get into was like the button joystick combinations, because it seemed really awkward. You know, you have the quarter circle forward, half circle back, back forward charge, up down charge. But some of those moves were kind of akin to some of the the earlier King of Fighters, where you had to do like a half circle forward, then back, then forward, mm-hmm. then back, and then do the move. But yeah, okay, I got you. That that's what got my finger quick, man. Yeah, <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> um, number t- number six, Killer Instinct. Okay. Another game that got me up at Aladdin Castle. Yeah, I, I'm still mad at how you did the. Uh, you the one that showed me the Ultra Combo. I'm still <laughs> mad at you about that. If I'm not mistaken, you were using uh, Combo when you did it on me. Yeah. DJ Combo. That was my boy. <laughs> Man, I was so uh. mad. Dude, you probably would have yeah. kicked me out that arcade if I would have flipped that machine over. <laughs> <laughs> Number five is Super Street Fighter 2. Okay. Um, number four, Battle Arena to Shinden. Okay. Dude, we hinted to that last week. Number three was Tekken 2. I, I ain't going to lie, it was hard. I wanted to put Tekken up there, but I was like, Tekken 2 is when I really got into it. Mm-hmm. Cause Tekken Doe had it, and I really couldn't play it. You know, he he kept using the fighter I wanted to use, so I had to pick somebody who I couldn't fight with. So, no. Who who did he use? He used to use um Law. Ah. Uh, and I wanted to use Law because he back then I was still all like everything Bruce Lee. I had to use him, and he wouldn't let me use him. Oh man. Mad at him. <laughs> <laughs> Number two is Mortal Kombat. The original Mortal Kombat. That that game right there, to me, 
it changed gaming, like fighting gaming for me forever. So I'm always had that up high on my list. But number one is Marvel's Capcom 2. <laughs> I own that game on several platforms. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I wish they uh do a remastering of it and bring it out on the PS4. I think eventually they'll they'll do that. Um, I'm actually like Matt was saying before he left. I, I'm looking. I wish they would do um, Dark Stalkers. Um, I have a one, one of the Dark Stalkers, which happens to be one of my favorite games um, on my list. So um, I guess what I'll do, I'll go ahead and um, start on my list. And since Matt, oh, there he goes. Hello, Matt. How are you, sir? I am back. You missed some really you. You miss you miss some really really good games, really good games, and you got a little chrome or something on you. Yeah, there you go, brother. You good? All right. Uh, you went to the wire. Get some stuff situated. Hold on, one more time. God, I leave my hold on. Hey, get that money. Uh, right now we set we set we set we set. Okay. All right, fellas. Now we're good. All right, okay. So I'm gonna go ahead and um just to recap um. X had some really good games on his list. What was your number one again, Marvel's Capcom 2? Yep. Run th- if you don't mind, X, run through your top five for Matt so he can chime in on it if you don't mind. All right. Number five was Super Street Fighter 2. Number four was Battle Arena to Shinden. Number three was Tekken 2. Number two was the original Mortal Kombat. And number one was Marvel's Capcom 2. Marvel's Capcom 2. Mhm. I mean, that's, that's, that, that means it is what it is. It's Marvel's Capcom. Right. <laughs> oh. Hey man, well I tell you what, let me let me roll back here. I think we left off at uh, I said Robert Schools, right? Yeah. Uh huh. Okay. So that, all right. So number twelve uh, is Fatal Fury: Mark of the Wolves. Uh, number eleven is Guilty Gear. Uh, number ten. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Tournament Fighters. <laughs> Number nine, Samurai Showdown. <laughs> Number eight, King of Fighters 98. Uh, Street, uh, Number seven is Street Fighter Third Strike. Uh, Number six is Killer Instinct 1. Number five is Mortal Kombat 2. Number four, Tekken 2. Number three, Soul Calibur 2. I'm going to shock some people when I say this. Wait, well, I'm going to watch Al's reaction when I say it. Number two is uh, Marvel vs. Capcom 2. <laughs> I think that's going to be... Go ahead, sir. Number one is what I'll probably say the game that started it all for me is uh, fighting games, which is Street Fighter 2. Uh, and that's the only reason why, because if it weren't for Street Fighter 2, I wouldn't have played, I wouldn't have been playing Marvel's Cup console. So, you know, Street Fighter 2, uh, you know, if you go back and play that now, man, you, you'll have to get your ass whipped by a computer. That's how hard the game is. <laughs> right. <laughs> I think most fighting games, I mean, especially... In our in our era, growing up with Alliance Castle and Time Out Man, and before the advent of um, net codes and internet play and all that kind of stuff, man, Street Fighter Two was pretty much like that game. If you are a fighting game fanatic, I cannot see how you can love fighting games and not have some type of respect or admiration for Street Fighter Two. It's just you know. Yeah, I mean. Okay. <clears throat> I mean, the thing about it, man, is that, you know, and, and this is why I'm so hard on Street Fighter Five, man, is that, you know, all this damn air blocking and just out, out of the loop ultras and just pairing all over the place and stuff like that. I feel like the games have just gotten so bogged down with mechanics that it takes away the authenticity for a player like myself that has... Pride in, you know, I, that was my bread and butter fighting games for the longest. And uh, if you ask me how many times I even played Mortal Com- even the new Mortal Kombat, man, I, I'll be honest with you, man, I only played it maybe about four or five times. I just, 
I, fighting games for me to be today just they just don't do it like they used to. You know, I, I get more kick out of playing a Capcom versus SNK two, which was you know I should have put on the list, but that was hard to get on there. But you know, stuff like that, or or, or old Mortal Kombat or Mortal Kombat two or Ultimate, you know, then sitting around playing Street Fighter five, you know, and then do this whole thing with having to download. All these extra characters and palette swaps and all that crap, you know, you know. I just rather pu push the damn physical button and get the red uniform and be through with it, you know. Yeah, I feel you on that. I mean, with the current model that most fighting games, well, let me just say, Street Fighter. Well, you know, it's a sad predicament, man. In in fighting games where you have to win prize money to get extra costumes right. and colors. I mean, but I will say I bought Street Fighter uh, Five, and yeah, <laughs> I traded mine in. I'm gonna keep it because it's Street Fighter, man. You know, I I think, and that's one thing about Street Fighter, and I can understand completely where Matt's coming from. Street Fighter, is Street Fighter, Street Fighter is one of those. It's like an analogy where you gotta. A friend, and that friend you know for the longest of times, and no matter how bad that dude piss you off, you still find you know, in your heart to forgive him. And that's how Street Fighter is. When Street Fighter Four came out, I bought the collector's edition. Eight months later, they came out with an ultra mega purpose, high density adamantium Street Fighter <laughs> Four version. With a free jar of peanut butter, you know what I'm saying? But you know, it is what it is, man. I, I've come to that conclusion where, from here on out, man, I'm gonna be more careful. Street Fighter games. So, all right, Al, take it away, my friend. Thank you, sir. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for joining us. My list, y'all gonna trip? Cause I was listening for a couple of games that y'all didn't mention. I'm like what? <gasps> Excuse me. What is going on? <laughs> so okay, we're gonna start. At any point in time, y'all will welcome to chime in. Okay. Now my list is kind of like all over the place, but my top five is pretty much firm. Number fifteen, X Men: Children of the Atom. Matt. Well, the only reason I didn't put it on there is, is Marvel's Mar 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 Cat That's the only reason why. It, I didn't put I didn't put Marvel superheroes on there, and I didn't put Children of Adam, and I didn't put X Men versus uh, Street Fighter. Street Fighter, and that's right. just only only because I just felt like Marvel vs. Capcom kind of summed it all up. Gotcha. X. <laughs> Nothing to say, man. Nothing. I I know one man. thing. Uh, you roll up on on Magneto on Children of the Adam the wrong way, you gonna get your ass handed to. Man, I got pained in that game. I couldn't grab Cyclops. that game to save my life, man. Really? I was bad Cyclops. in that game. Cyclops was my boy. That's what me and Cyclops. So on time, I actually had respect for Cyclops in the X Men universe. on that game. Other than that, Cyclops <laughs> is a punk. Real talk. Okay, <laughs> number fourteen. World Heroes Two slash Jet. I thought about it. I honestly thought that was a great game, man. I liked it. I liked the premise. I like um, Hanzo Fuma. Um, what's the, the Hulk Hogan clone? I can't remember his name. Uh, uh, muscle. It was a muscle something. Muscle power. Yep. There you go. Yeah. I like the mud man with the voodoo mask. I <laughs> thought it was an all. It was a good. It was a pretty good alternative to Street Fighter, man. You know, during that time frame, everybody and their cousin was trying to, you know. Cash in on the Street Fighter craze. So, World Heroes 2, World Heroes Jet. Number 13 is Mortal Kombat. I remember the first time Mortal Kombat, I was working at Alaska Castle, and they brought that sucker in brand new. And then on top of that, they put it in the front mm -hmm. of Alaska Castle. So, when you walk by, you can help but see it. Quick and story. Get in. No, I'm going to tell you what happened. Quick story. Quick, quick story. I remember when they first hooked the game up, right? 
I'm there, and then the little short dude, I can't remember his name. He looked like Chuck Norris, but he was like five foot two. Y'all remember what I'm talking about? <laughs> he like a cross between Chuck Norris and Diamond Dallas Page. <laughs> <laughs> and he, and he was cool. You remember what I'm talking about? Because he played yeah. Warcraft all the time. He brought his desktop computer and put it in the back. And he played Warcraft all the time. And he dips up, and he was cool. I can't remember his name. But anyway. <laughs> He put it in the front. He put it in the front. People were like, okay, Mortal Kombat, what is all this all about and stuff? And I remember one day, man, I cannot remember the dude's name, but he was in there playing and Sub Zero. The screen got dark. Sub Zero grabbed that joker by the neck and pulled his neck. I'm talking about cartoon character jaw dropping. That's that was me. Mm-hmm. I couldn't believe it. Ever since then, man, it was like, oh my God. Liu Kang still had the dumbest fatality on that, though. <laughs> the bicycle kick. The bicycle, the bicycle kick. But oh, oh. You can do it all the way across the room. Yeah, the, the kick in the uppercut. That was like, okay. My bad, the cartwheel right. kick, yeah. Yeah, cartwheel kick in the uppercut. Like, it would have been like if he uppercutted you and tore your torso, but he just knocked you down. Okay. Cool, Lou. Good job. Okay, oh, number 12. Mortal Kombat 2. That was another one. Then I had a shock value is the first one, but you know, when I learned that Luke Kane fatality, whew, I ain't shared with nobody but a couple of people because I was cutting folks in half. No, no, I mean Kung Lao, I'm sorry. Cutting folks in half. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Four, 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 low kick. kick. <laughs> there you go. True gamer right now, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> that was that was not rehearsed, ladies and gentlemen. That we just know these games. Yeah. All right. Number eleven was King of Fighters ninety six. I remember they brought that in the arcade at Last Castle, and it was on like a fifty fifty or 50, it was on a big screen. Mm-hmm. Man, that was awesome. Love that game. Uh, number ten, Samurai Showdown two. I was more a fan of. I like Samurai Showdown, but Samurai Showdown two really got it for me. Yeah. Samurai Showdown 5 sub. I bought that on the Xbox. It is garbage. Showdown okay. 2 was more polished. It was. It was a lot more polished. The characters were, were more well-rounded. And I think they went into the lab from the first one and improved upon it. So it was good. Okay. Uh, number 9. This is a more newer game. King of Fighters 13. The one that came out on the Xbox One and PlayStation. That's a beautiful, huh? that's a beautiful game. Beautiful game, man, and uh, it was a vast improvement of King of Fighters 9 through 12. Uh, I really didn't care about the online play, but it was pretty good when it came down to online, so I'm looking forward to 14 next week. Yeah. Um, number eight is a tie, Soul Blade and Soul Calibur. Um, I'm pretty much a, fond, a, a char- a, I'm fond of Soul Calibur 2. I think that was a, a really good game. Um, Pretty balanced. Number seven, I'm going in your territory, Matt. Darkstalkers, but I'm using Jetta's Damnation. I actually had that game. I bought an import, and I had it on the second Saturday, and I had to get that big memory card to go in the back to play the games. Jetta's Damnation. I don't know where that game is now. <laughs> Number six, it's Tekken Six. Um, I like the. The dynamics on that particular game. I like Bob. You know, he represented the big dude. You know. <laughs> Number five, Street Fighter EX Plus Alpha. We talked talk about that last week. We about that last week. Wish they would bring that back. I wish that would be one of the HD games that they would put out. That would probably be a pretty good looking game if they went HD on it and cleaned the graphics up. Number four, it's going to be a tie. Between Street Fighter Alpha and Marvelous Capcom 2. Even though I love Marvelous Capcom 2, at one point in time, my guy, Cammy and Psylocke was like uh, a force to be reckoned with. I got real lame in the game after I got fired from Time Out. <laughs> <laughs> number, <laughs> okay, number three is also a tie. Actually, number... I'm at number four. No, uh, number four was a tie. Okay. Number three is going to be a tie between the first Killer Instinct and the new Killer Instinct. Killer Instinct was one of those games where it was like, good God, man, why are you beating this dude? Stop. 
But then once you learn the the doubles, the auto doubles, and all that kind of stuff, it was like, man, I'm trying to see how big of a combo I can get. And that was the name of the game. Yep. You know, just trying to see, man, I got a 178 hit combo. Man, you lying. Okay, I'm going to show you. Right. Um, Number two is going to be Tekken 2. Number one is going to be Street Fighter 2. Honorable mention goes to Mortal Kombat 9. I thought that was a, I, that was a really good game, for real. O- offline, it's a hell of a game. What? Yeah. Online, it's, it's that damn Scorpion, it, it, you know, it's just... Well, that's the same way with X, so everybody want to use Scorpion online or Ermac. Yeah. Well, that's the same with um the Ultimate Marvelous Capcom, that daggone Wolverine, man. I you know, got Wolf- Wolverine was so... You know, this is the funny thing. I guess they made up for it because Marvelous Capcom 2 Wolverine went through. And then it was like, okay, we're going to fix this. We're going to make him all powerful from here out. <laughs> he was all powerful, all right. Man, you know what I hated about Marvelous Capcom 3? You can be destroying a dude or whatever, and then they get that X factor. And you couldn't win. I hated that. It's, it's literally, once that showed up, that's it, man. Yeah, I was like, as soon as that happened, you might as well just sit the controller down. Man, it, it was, and everybody did it online. It was so cheese, man. Oh. But, man, you know, it's always a pleasure to, to go through and take a look at old nostalgia games. So, uh, Next week we're gonna switch it up a little bit, man. And next week is gonna be, <laughs> I, I can see Al, Al's gonna lean back over when I say this. But next week is going to be our top ten professional wrestlers of all time. Oh, yeah, top ten professional wrestlers of all time. Ooh, yeah, brother. Ooh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He, he'll be there as well. So oh. I, I can tell you he's on my list. Ooh, yeah. That. Man, I can tell you right now, I'm probably going to get muddy in on this show. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, this is my favorite time of the week. We're going to skip right into this, and we'll segue into our speculation. Uh, Xavier, we're going to let you go first this week. Uh, it's time for the comment hall. Let's see what kind of hall you got rolled in for this week. I'm excited. I've been waiting on this all week long. Mine, mine is it's a little small one, but I finally got the two comments that I ordered. Two weeks ago from um, Midtown, I got the Rebirth 1. I mean, uh, Red Hood and Outlaws Rebirth 1. And I got the variant copy of Nightwing 2, which both of these stores are actually good. I don't know if y'all picked them up. You might want to might want to check those out. Uh, today, I went and picked up Batman uh, 4. No, number 5. Yeah, Batman 5 variant cover. How is that story? It's up and down. It's it's up and down. It's good, but it's up and down. It's not All Star Batman by no means, but it's it's a decent read. Uh, it's a nice little twist on it too, so you you'll really enjoy it. Um, I also picked up Harley Quinn number two variant copy. Oh variant my copy. god, that's number the two. one I wanted. That's the other Harley Quinn copy I wanted, man. They, how many did they have left when you went? Like four. Okay, it, damn it. What time did you go? Uh, I went at three fifteen. Well, I think it was gone, man. It's it's they were hidden behind other ones. Damn, you could probably still get it. Okay. Um, I went ahead. I went ahead and got Justice League three, the uh, variant cover. It was. I had to think long and hard about this one. The uh, the regular cover is a lot better than this one, but I just went ahead and grabbed this because it's the variant cover. Gotcha. Man, he like somebody named Bruno on that cover. I saw that, man. <laughs> Bruno Capelli. <laughs> that ain't Superman. That's Bruno. What was his name? Hagar? How you doing? Yeah, Mike what, Hagar. Yo, Mike what Hagar. Hagar so <laughs> <laughs> man, good game. <laughs> and uh, I went ahead and picked up Nightwing 3. The variant cover. That's a nice this is a good storyline too, Al. You, if you um, yeah, check it out, check it out. And I went ahead and picked up the official Suicide Squad one rebirth, which I don't understand about the rebirth. Some last 
time it was a number one. But then this is the second issue, the second issue, but it's still number one. What what it is, man? It's a, the first one is a one shot, and then they restart the set. They restart the series on the second one. When it, when it, another one comes out, mm -hmm. that's when it starts the series. Okay, right. Set. So it's like a pilot. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Good analogy, sir. But yeah, man, though, that's my that's my little hole. I um, I got some stuff ordered from Midtown. I'm I'm just gonna say it'll probably be two weeks before I get it. But I, I, uh, I ain't gonna lie, I had to jump into the variants, the hip hop variants, like y'all did, man. I, <laughs> I had to dive in. Sweet, well, I have a, I'm a, a happy gold man. mine. I am a happy man over here, <laughs> <laughs> and I am I am more than proud to say that uh, I've got some loot today. <laughs> And I have got something I have been looking for for God knows how long. And I, it came across, I was doing a late night eBay, and I saw a buy it now, man, and I couldn't resist it. So, Tomb <laughs> of Dracula, number 10, is here. The first appearance of Blade. This is a perfect mint condition copy. I couldn't believe it. I couldn't believe I got it, and especially the price I got it at. I thought it was highway robbery for what the guy was selling it for, and it was just one of those happened to be in the right place at the uh, the right time deal. So I, I took advantage of that. Uh, coming off the back end of that, man, went to Comics Plus on Saturday, was bruising in the back. Some of y'all know about that. I'll kind of get into that a little bit later on. But while I was back there, I found another Tomb of Dracula. And this is the uh, third appearance of Blade, and this is actually where uh, Blade got bit by Dracula. So, got this one here. This is in great condition as well. While I was in there, I just went, I just went right down the line. More Tomb <laughs> of Dracula, more Blade Tomb of Dracula. Dracula. And this actually has <laughs> Blade and Werewolf by Night. So, like that. And then here comes my. This is probably the. This is my. My coup de gras from the weekend uh, on the Marvel side. This is something I've been looking for for a while, and uh, when I, I had to call Al Rainey and tell him about it, but I got the uh, Iron mm. Fist mm. number fourteen first appearance <laughs> of Saber Two. Saber Two. Saber Two. Uh. This one, man. This is uh, as y'all know. A couple of weeks ago, I had the Marvel Milestones, so I've actually now have the uh, actual. Uh, full, the, the, the regular copy of it, and uh, this thing here is just, is screaming up the eBay charts. So I mean, if you can find this anywhere, kind of like I did, you know, I actually wanted to pay. I paid about seventy for this, but it's going for two hundred, three, two and three hundred on on eBay. And I think I actually saw a copy last night. Somebody threw up for seventy bucks as well. So if you can find it for under a hundred, go for it. Hey Matt, Comics Plus had that one, but it was in terrible condition. This was this was the one it came out. This was came out of the back. Okay. Yeah. This came out of the back. All right. This one I ordered on a Sunday uh, on eBay. I saw this one going for fifteen, so I just it was a buy it now, so I went ahead and got it. More Iron Fist. This is the first team up of Power Man and the Iron Fist. So got that one. I figured this is probably gonna wind up going up a little bit after Luke Cage comes out. And then I'm not sure if I showed y'all this one or not, but this is the uh, first appearance of uh, Misty Knight. Mm. Yeah, got this one. This was at uh, Comics Plus as well. I got this one for about seven dollars. So I got that one. And then I bought. I got this one. This is a 99 center. This is one I got. I thought about Al when I bought this one. I, I didn't say anything to you about it because I want to see your reaction. But I got a What If Silver mm. Surfer Possessed the Infinity Gauntlet. <laughs> yeah, so I got this one for ninety nine cent. Where did you get that from? From Comics Plus. eBay. <laughs> eBay man. Yeah, I thought you actually. I thought you would have had this one. I don't have that one. Yeah, and I went ahead and grabbed it because I figured that with the with the Infinity Gauntlet getting ready to take off, this is something that would, you know, possibly go, you know, a little value there. It might, you know, even if it's like only a ten dollar or five dollar growth, I figured this would be something that. You know, you can get a little bit of investment off of it. 
That's not a bad pickup for 99 cents, period. Yes, yeah, I mean, 99 cents, man. All right, this next one I got for about 15. And I got this one at Comics Plus. This is the uh, first appearance of the Black Cat. Black Cat. Black Cat. Janet Jackson style. So <laughs> that. And this one is if this one is starting to, to go up in price as well. She's uh she's she's really starting to, to take off. Another ninety nine center. Uh, you probably thought I actually had this one, but I didn't. Well, actually, I'll take that back. I did have it, but I actually like ripped the cover or whatever. And so I just wound up trashing it. So I wound up getting this one for 99 cents on eBay. Which is. Ooh, I had that one. Yeah, this is actually the first full appearance of uh, Domino. Domino. Yeah, people think New Music 98 was the first appearance. It's not, it's this one. So. Second up, uh, Spider Woman number one. This is one that's starting to go up in price. If you go look on eBay, you'll start to see this one. Starting to shift. I got this from Comics Plus for five dollars. That's not bad. <coughs> All right. Next up, Dead Devil, one eighty three. First appearance of a Punisher versus the uh, Dead Devil. Well, first appearance of Punisher in a de in the Dead Devil universe. Uh, got this one for about seven bucks. Me and Weldon, we were down at Heroes. We saw this slab going for seventy five. So this was a, a pretty good deal. And I'm I'm actually I'm gonna send this one off to get slapped. And then here's another ninety nine center. Uh Human Torch number one. I just like the uh, artwork. Thought it was pretty cool. Ninety nine cent. You know, you just never know with Human Torch. He's a pretty popular character when it comes to Fantastic Four. And you just you just you don't you don't know what you get. When it comes to Fantastic Four, so you know it's just something that may go up. If not, you know something that can go on the wall. Uh, this is probably man. If I if I had to put uh, if I had to put put a value on this, this is probably gonna be one of my high price value uh, comics that I have. This one is one I'm gonna take definitely take good care of. This is a old Donald Duck, uh, the Ghost in the Grotto. Now, I got this book for about ten dollars, and guy sold it to me at Comics Plus. He said he sold it because he thought he thought it looked like a reader copy. Well, I've been telling everybody, man, and I'm gonna tell y'all the same thing: go start to invest in old Walt Disney comics because old Walt Disney comics are worth their weight in gold because Disney. Is becoming like a paramount part of Americana, and so this these are like this is like considered old art piece. This is the closest thing you get like art pieces of old Disney work. When I saw the value at how much this comic book <laughs> was worth, even at the worst condition, I was like, for ten bucks, absolutely. I got this cat man, this comic book in bad condition. Is worth from anywhere two fifty and up mm. in bad condition. <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. Bad condition. So I made off with, with a good copy, man. I thought it was I me personally, man, I think it's a pretty good copy. So I saw a couple of those um Sunday when I stopped by Commons Plus. Month. Yeah, if you can see them for four or five bucks, man, Al, when you go to these flea markets, when you go to the Peace Tree Fountains, start looking for this kind of stuff, man. These, this is this is stuff people are overlooking because people just say, oh, it's just Donald Duck and Disney. It's not worth anything. Man, these things are worth loot. I mean, keeping with the theme. Got another one. Five dollars. You know. More loot. But then here's probably my this is you would think that Tomb of Dracula is my whole, holy grail, but this one kind of shoved it out on out of the way, man. This is something that uh, Al I, Al knows about it because I talked to him about it on on uh, Saturday. But this here, man, this comic book right now is probably worth about six to seven hundred dollars. I paid a hundred for it, but this is probably about a, anywhere from I say anywhere from six to eight hundred, depending on depending on who's buying. But this is a Torky number four. I just look at the cover. I don't even have to tell you. 
you know, this is one of those vintage comics that you probably see once in a lifetime. And I just asked, actually went through the back when I was at Comics Plus, was digging through the box. I pulled it up, and uh, I kind of hesitated because I thought it was going to be one of those $1,000 comics. And so I just said, well, let me let me take it up there and see what I can get for it. And for what he gave it to me for, I was like, yep, I'll take that. It's in better condition to, than the one I saw on on uh, eBay earlier. And I think that one was going for 535 and it was a four or five or five or six grade. This is right around up there. So this is probably about at least a six hundred dollar comic book. So I'm I'm actually gonna probably get this one slab. I know getting this slab is gonna cost me a, a arm and a leg, but this is something that I would I would like to uh, to get slabbed. All right. <laughs> Moving up, I kind of got everything separated this, this week to modern. Uh, got a all star. I'm um, excuse me. Uh, all all new X Men number one. Of course, you know why I got that. Don't have to tell you. Somewhere welding this, pissing his pants. Uh, was with welding on Saturday and actually got this one. This was this was the uh, silk. Uh, this is connects with the uh, other spider spider gals. Uh, Covers. This is the uh, Women of Power when they did that little run, but it's a all a connected variant. Uh, I got one that I actually forgot I ordered a long time ago, and I guess the shipper just shipped it out. It's a uh, it's a variant. It's a black and white variant of the uh, Civil War three, and I hadn't seen this anywhere. Uh, I think this one is a uh, PX exclusive previews exclusive Comic Con. So I, I got this one. So I, I I hadn't seen it. Maybe if Tony's watching, he can look into it and see what it's going for. I'm not sure what it's going for on eBay. You got that from Comics Plus or eBay? No, uh, this one was from a seller on eBay. Uh, one of the guys that normally sells. This is the uh, previews exclusive comic. Read it. It's pretty good. I'm actually gonna go get the the uh, second and third issues to go with this. And uh, I actually saw this slap. I'm just waiting for the guy to take the price down. But I actually saw this slap on eBay. Next up, the uh, Flintstones. I got it because I like the cover. Uh, you know, the Flintstones always take their takes on different things in the in the in their world, like uh, Rock Martins, Louis Vuitton. Uh, not Uggs, but Uh, Johnny Volcanoes, <laughs> Conorverse, you know, different things like that. So I, I snagged that one. And then next up is something that I kind of I wanted to put in and wanted to show some of y'all already, but I did. And it's the Teen Titans. Oh, with the uh, Lost Boys cover. This is a variant. That's nice. Man, we what? Where you got it? <laughs> uh, I got this on eBay, man, for about it's about either seven or nine. It's one of the two. Let's jump on that X All right, yeah. I'm right now. Just type in Teen Titans Lost Boys. You'll find. Uh, went to our Comics Plus today. Picked up this one. Uh, all new Wolverine eleven. This is uh, I've seen in a couple of speculation groups that this is the uh, one that you want to get your hands on. Also, uh, Suicide Squad is Xavier got. This is one of the covers I saw heating up this morning on one of the spec groups. And uh, I went with Batgirl, Birds of Prey. Got that one. Is that uh, a Michael. good storyline? Uh, I hadn't read this one, believe it or not. I hadn't had a chance to sit down and read the uh, Birds of Prey. This one, anyway. So I hadn't had a chance to check it out yet. So I'm actually going to probably download a copy and sit down and read it. Ugh. And then we're going to roll over to the slabs. Coming out the slab box this week is uh, X-Men Annual 14. Uh, I'm, I know Al Rainey knows. Do you know who the first appearance in this is, Brother Rainey? Um, that would be Gambit for that, 200, that is, sir. That is correct, my friend. First appearance of Gambit. Got this here. You can actually you can actually find this slab on eBay for 45 dollars. And if you if you if you want it, let me know. I'll send you the link. 
I know exactly. I got it since I saved it. So if anybody's looking for this slab, I can get it to you for forty five. Well, so I can get, get get you can buy it for forty five, but I'll send you the link. <clears throat> Next up, told you I'm not playing, man. Chippendale, eighty three, nine zero. I like the artwork, man. Chippendale Rescue Rangers fan. Thought I'd snag that. And then next up is if you watch a cartoon, you should watch a Cartoon Express, and you'll remember the Roman Holiday. So I got that. So nine two actually dropped the damn slab picking it up. Oh. Yeah, but it's all good. It's still protected. So that's why that's why it's in the slab. So. Roman holiday. That's what's up. Yeah, that's that. Uh, and then this butte here, man, I got this one on Monday, and it actually came today. Shipped it pretty fast. And I got this one here. This one I got for about 12, I think it was 12, 15 total with shipping. And this was just one of those under-the-radar CGCs. And if Weldon's watching, he'll know exactly what I'm talking about because I showed him how to get these under-the-radar under CGCs. But I got called the Conqueror number one. But an eight, eight and a half grade slab. And uh, I think that is it for me today. But if, if anybody ever wants to go through, man, and, and want to learn how to get these slabs at a low price, man, just let me know, man. I'll show you. Uh, I think the, the most I've paid for a slab so far is like 60 bucks, 60, 65. But you can find them on eBay, man. You just have to be patient. You have to kind of just kind of know how to go about doing it. Just don't get over anxious. And uh, you can you can get them. Now I know what's up next because I've been told, and I was sworn to secrecy by by a hard by a hard call. But I'm gonna let him go ahead and tell you what he's got tonight, and he shall reveal it to you, brother Rainey. The floor is yours. I shall. Thank you very much, man. Uh, I had a pretty decent haul. Um, this week I had a couple of books that I ordered from um, from Midtown that came in. Um, primarily some um, some back issues and some stuff. Um, the stuff came in after the after the haul from last week. So uh, without further ado, I'm gonna go ahead and um, break it down as to what I got last week. Hold on one quick second. Mm -hmm. I didn't get crazy like my man Madden and bought like every one of the mm -hmm. uh, the Harley Quinn variants, but I did get two, and I'm probably gonna pick up a third one at Bungie. I got a Harley Quinn one, this particular cover, and I got. This particular cover, which I'm actually fond of, I like this cover. I think it's a really nice cover. It is a nice cover. I got it. That's a nice one. So pick those two up. Those came through from Midtown. Yeah, I was actually looking for the first one you showed, but when I saw that one, I I grabbed it. Yeah, I got those two from Midtown. They came in like um last Thursday, I think. Okay, back issue time. I've been collecting this series because I'm a fan of the the movie. I own one of the copies I bought some time ago, so it's a four issue mini series, four or five issue mini series. So I got to get three more, and that is my man. Donuts don't wear alligator shoes. Dynamite! <laughs> Dynamite! Dynamite! You know, I was actually trying to find number one of that, but couldn't find. It. I got number one, so this oh, is number three. Okay. So I got number one, number three, now I need two, four, and five to finish out the mini series. So Black Dynamite. The first one was pretty good, man, to be honest with you. And one uh, interesting note, IDW, the cats that do um, the Ninja Turtles comics, mm -hmm. they actually do Black Dynamite or did Black Dynamite too. So, all right, next two were some back issues of what we talked about last week. Alpha Flight. You can't see it because of the sticker. But um as Matt was talking about, um, I think Alpha Flight at one at some point is gonna be 
a commodity. I think Marvel is going to start putting some invest, investing some time in Alpha Block, Alpha Flight, like they are doing in humans right now. So they are a slept on group, and uh, like I said, I I have pretty much the first full run, with the exception of about 10, 12 issues. So uh, keeping in line of back issues. I'm going to take it out of the plastic so it can be seen. Uh, this is New Mutants 32 uh, with this particular acquisition. I am only short one more uh, New Mutants Volume 1, uh, which is number 73, and I'll have the first four on the New Mutants. Matt, I saw something on Midtown, and I meant to tell you, but I'm going to tell you now, you mentioned it last week that you um, weren't too concerned about getting a copy of this but let me tell you Midtown when I went on there I found this for a dollar and fifty some cents sixty some cents it is the second printing of New Mutants 87 hey man you can't beat that man for that price right it's in good condition I already got another one of these and I got the orange cover but I figured, what the hey, you know, and I might just say, man, my Matt, you know. But they had them on Midtown for like a dollar and some change. I go um, one of those. Yeah. Keeping in line with New Mutants, I went to, um, what do you call it, a variant store, um, An Amazing Escape today, uh, this week, or last week. Oh, no, early this week. And I was just thumbing through. They have a box where they have a dollar comics. So what I did, they had a New Mutants Volume 3. And what I did, I picked up 10 copies because they were a dollar a piece. So I picked up issues 39 through issues 50. It ran through issue 50. Okay. Um, issue 50 on eBay in very good condition is going to run you about four or five bucks. So I got each one of those for a dollar. So I paid like 12 bucks for them. <laughs> All right. Um, Black Panther 5, picked that up. I haven't read it yet, but I need to get it. They got a variant that I've been looking at that I've been thinking about getting. It seems like Tonio has like all the variants for this yeah. particular book. <laughs> he does, yeah. Like he got a variant I think they made specifically for him. Like the, the T.C. Coleman, Coleman, right, the Coleman variants. So Black Panther 5, pick this one up. X. Now I'm going to wait on that one. I'm going to wait on him. <laughs> got some fight. Um, pick this one up today, Green Arrow. Shout out to Vincent, man. This is a good book. Um, speaking of which, I is did read old school art. Yep. Oh and wow. This is this is actually the original. This is the first print cover. They got like two or three variants, but I normally for these go for the first cover or the original cover, original print. So um, yeah, this one's a dope cover, and the the story's pretty good. This is issue number five. So, Peapot Green Arrow. All right. <clears throat> okay. Picked up Justice League today, Justice League number three. And I got the cover that X didn't get, but he got Bruno Cavelli on the front <laughs> of his. So, I like that cover. I like that one. <laughs> I looked at it, man. I said, that dude look like an enforcer for the mafia. It don't look like Superman. Dude, so, I was so close to getting that cover in your hand. I like this, man. This is a nice little cover, man. This is this started off slow, but it seems like it's picking up pretty good. Mm -hmm. So, all right, um, got two issues. The most recent issues of Extraordinary X Men number eleven and twelve. I'm waiting for the Death of X, which is probably going to be coming out soon. I think next month. Uh. Let me see. I'm down to two. On to the good stuff. The good stuff. The good stuff. In line with the hip hop variants, uh, X, I strongly suggest, man, if you get an opportunity, hit up Midtown. Midtown has some really good variants, man. The hip hop variants. Uh, unlike eBay, uh, some of them people are supporting meth and crack and cocaine and barbiturate habits with some of these prices on these books, which is insane. 
Um, I digress. However, I picked up two variants. Uh, I'm very happy and pleased with these particular variants. The first one is Extraordinary X Men One, three feet high and rising, De La Soul. Yeah. Yep. Yep. And the second one, Shaolin Shadow Boxing, and the oh, Wu Tang okay. Sword Style. If what you say is true, the Shaolin and the Wu Tang. Could be dangerous. <laughs> Do you think your Wu Tang sword could defeat me? I'm God. I let you try my Wu Tang style. This is into the squad. This is Squadron Supreme One. Um, this is actually the variant for this book. I'm going to start picking up Squadron Supreme. I was talking to a guy in the comic book store the other day, and he was saying that it was a pretty good read. Uh, I read this one. Um, this is the book where Submariner Prince Namor gets murk, gets his head blown smooth off. Yeah. So I'm gonna start picking this book up. The first issue, the first printing is actually um, an uh, Alex Ross cover. Mm -hmm. So uh, and that book is going for a pretty penny right now. So I plan on picking those up. Last but not least, least but not last, I've been talking to my compadres on uh, the comic hall. The quote. To quote Death the Rose, I've been looking for this book for so long, and for so long, I found the holy one of my holy grails. Matthew Odom picked it up the other week, and I was envious of him. However, I finally got me a copy, and it is X Men 100. <laughs> X Men 100, ladies and gentlemen. The American Dream that the Rose is excited because I picked this book up for about fifteen dollars on eBay. Hey man, I'm telling you, if you can go find, if anybody's watching this, go get your hands on X Men 100 because that comic book is gonna have long term legs. Al, for those who don't know, please explain to them the significance of that issue. The significance of this issue, basically. Both the original X Men team, which is on the left, which consists of Cyclops, Beast, Marvel Girl, Iceman, and Angel, went toe to toe against Colossus, Storm, Wolverine, and Banshee from the second team of X Men. It's been a minute since I've actually read this book, but I will say this this particular book is a key issue. Um, just for the simple fact, not only for the cover, but for the story that entail that it entails. So it is one of those books that, like Matt said, will it will keep its value. Um, one good thing about X Men books, as far as the older books, a lot of those books, you know, depending upon the condition, uh, they can fetch. I mean, if you go on eBay, anywhere from twenty bucks for an obscure book. The first appearance of Toad, all the way up to six, seven hundred dollars. You know, so if you can um, get your hands on some of those older books, X Men books, specifically X Men 100, X Men, um, John Size X Men 1, which is the next book that I'm looking for, uh, X Men 94, which is the the Death of Thunderbird, uh, a few other ones I can't think of. Yeah. But um, that's going to do it for my haul, man. So I'm pretty pleased. I got a couple of other books coming that hopefully I have for next week. So uh, that's going to do it for me as far as my comics. Cool, man. Excellent, excellent haul as, as usual, man. Everybody has some really good stuff, man. Uh, Speculation-wise, man, if you are in – Al, I know, I know it's not here because I, I, I look. But if you can snag a copy of Once uh, – get the name right because I've got the first one I just can't once our land volume two volume one it's about scout comics then uh, go ahead and grab it man because that thing so is selling out left and right and from what I see here number one was only for 3,000 copies so number two is probably gonna be even lower uh, all-star Batman the cover with him holding the uh, the crowbar I think Antonio had it in his thread. That comic book now is selling at midtown for almost eighteen dollars. The black and white or the color? The color. 
It's a, a cover with Batman, and I guarantee you, it's probably going up in Comics Plus. The, the regular one? Yeah, yeah. It's eight going for eight, eight, sixteen, eighteen dollars on on Midtown. Uh, I, can, I can imagine a black and white variant of that's probably going to go for probably double or triple that. Yeah, I, I actually ordered one that has all the villains on the cover. Man, it's it's badass, man. It's it's it is badass. Hopefully it'll be here by next week so I can show y'all. But it is absolutely drop dead, drop I dead st- gorgeous. I still plan on getting the blank cover. Get uh, if you're looking to grab Midtown usually has a lot of uh, signed variants. So you know if you're looking to try to kind of beef up that side of your portfolio. Then grab you some signed variants, but you know don't pay over the odds. I'm not like two, three hundred dollars, but you know if you can get you a signed variant for about fourteen to fifteen bucks, man, then go ahead and snag it. Um, and each week I know I say this, but I, but I'm gonna hit it home again this week. If, you know, go get you some Silver Age comics. Go get you some old school Silver Age comics. Get you some silver, some silver. Get you some bronze. You know, be careful with modern comics, especially if you buy a whole run if you're not reading. Because those kind of bite you in the ass if you're not careful. But look for a lot of indie work too, man. There's a lot of indie comics that are like flying off the shelf. Kenji Girl. Uh, I know in the thread that we're all in, I put I put in there the other day. Kenji uh, Girl. I think they had the copy I got. They had a 300 run print copy, which is basically exclusive to this one company. But it's really the, the it's the third printing of Kenji Girl number one. But it's the only printing with a different cover. And it's signed by the artist, and there's only 300 of them. So once again, it kind of goes back to what I said: when you buy second and third prints, sometimes the second and third print cannot trump the original first print, depending on the variables at hand. So keep in mind when you're looking for stuff: if you see one of 10, one of 25, one of 50, one of 100, one 300, one 500, one 1,000, go ahead, make the investment, go ahead and get it because there's only going to be so many that's going to be printed. And usually when you see those, they're probably not going to print them again after that. So make sure you go ahead and snag those up. Uh, I'll tell you another sleeper hit, man, that I've seen that's starting to pick up steam that no one actually ever said anything about. And I just kind of bumped into it by accident. And Avengers 100. Because it's kind of like X-Men 100. They have all of the, the current Avengers, all of the Avengers are on that issue, on that cover. And you can find it for anywhere from 50. Anywhere from ten to about, you know, upwards of two, three hundred, depending on you know what kind of grade you're looking for. So that's something that you want to take into a excuse me, folks, long day to day. Something that you want to take into a uh, and take take into an account. And then also go get on the human <clears throat> train. All right. I know Larry Larry Croc is cursing the, the computer screen wherever he is. Get you some in Inhumans, man. Marvel is cashing in on the Inhumans. I'm telling you, they're getting ready to go full on hard on the humans, or even the current in humans. Go get you some of those one, two, threes if you can find them. Go ahead and get them. And if you can find the old, the Fantastic Four when they showed up, that's gonna cost you some loot. It's gonna cost you anywhere from 100 to 300. But if you can afford it, go ahead and grab that because the humans are, are really starting to take off. Power, Power Man, Iron Fist. I mean. It, it, you, you know, Luke Cage. You, I mean, you saw you saw the trailer for, for itself, so you know it's getting ready to uh, to take off. So those those are just some issues uh, that that I've seen recently. And another one is uh, and, and I know I know y'all gonna start laughing when I say this, but Midtown is getting ready to release a uh, Betty Boop. Y'all remember Betty Boop? Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> they're doing. They're releasing. She's releasing a new comic run. And it's going. She got like a. She got like ten, ten variants of it. But there's about two or three that I think are going to really, 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 really be hard to find once, uh, once it goes. And I think that's going to be a sleeper. One of those. If you don't grab it, it's kind of like. Remember last week I told y'all I was looking at getting Labyrinth. Do y'all remember that? Do y'all remember me saying I was close to picking up Labyrinth? Well, I go look up. Mm-hmm. I look online last night, and Labyrinth is going for forty and fifty dollars. Oh, was still a hundred. And I didn't. You I, I look right at. The labyrinth, like the the old movie labyrinth. Yeah, they did a they did a a thirty fifth a thirtieth anniversary, see the thirtieth thirty fifth anniversary, re release last week, and I looked at it, and I and I just was like, no, I, I just I don't I don't know, and I put it down and didn't get it, 
and damn if it's not going out the roof on eBay. So strange things like that, man. Don't you know those are what I call low low risk, high reward buys. You know, you see like there's one on Midtown that they're, they're doing a uh, Mighty Morphin Power Rangers re-release. Well, it's actually well, I take it this is what they're doing now. It's the start that they have at comic conventions. They're they're splitting that up with with with, with, with stores. So they I guess they have well if like Midtown said, well send us about thirty copies of, of this you know exclusive copy and we'll sell it. You know we'll mark it up and we'll sell it. Well they've got a Mighty Morphin Power Rangers uh, zero, but well it's number five rather, but it's in the zero series. And, and it's basically just the, the uh, Black Ranger holding the helmet. But they're extremely, extremely limited on the run. And they're selling it for about 16 You know how much? And I'll, show, I'll send it to y'all later on in the thread. But they are selling some of those early runs of that, of the different color ranges. They're going upwards of two, three, and four hundred dollars. Two, three, four hundred dollars. That's how rare they are, they are to find. So if you see one out there, go ahead and snag it. Get it, stash it away. And uh, I think that would be a good buy for you, man. So just kind of keep, when you're going through Midtown, another thing is price. You know, when you start seeing prices at $8, 16 that's what I call indicators. That's kind of like, wait a minute, I'm, I maybe need to take a long, hard look at this. And then especially if it's on, you know, a Batman, an all-star Batman, something like that, or, or DK3, man. Now those DK threes are just absolutely expensive, but if we can find one, uh, you know, at a reasonable price, then go ahead and snag it. Hey Matt. Yo. Um, just to just to clear some note, when you were talking about the All Star Batman, it's the um, Tyler Kirkham variant copy that's ten dollars. The regular is still um, five. Oh, midtown. Yeah, all of the okay. um, Tyler right. Kirkham I guess, okay, I guess variants. When, I guess when I saw the. Uh, the uh, I guess on Midtown the way they had when they had when I saw the uh, the photo they had that one and I guess you usually have to click and then you see it or whatever. But I saw that one flash across that earlier. But uh, I think that's pretty much about it tonight, fellas. Uh, Al, you got anything you want to add? Uh, no, not really. Um, I'm looking. I'm I'm looking forward. I know it's not coming out to October, but I'm looking forward to that uh that Masters of the Universe Thundercats team up. Um, I think that's going to be very epic. So uh, I went ahead and pre-ordered mine from uh, Midtown, and uh, waiting for that mosaic to, to come down the pipe. Uh, but other than that, man, I'm good. You know me, just picking up back issues and building my collectionist in that way. That's about it. Go, go get you. Uh, they've got a go get your Deadpool, man. Get your Deadpool Venom. And get you a uh, the Deadpool the next run of his series. One of them has him dressed up as Shakespeare on the cover. And I, I, I can almost bet you bottom dollar that's going to be one of those variants. That's going to be hard to find. Right, right. So, X. Um, just a quick question for Al. Um, how did you feel about the the uh, Flash Four? <sighs> I think that book, in my opinion, it kind of fell flat, man, because, you know, with the Vortex dude that tried to absorb the the speed force and the way they dispatched him, which is cool, uh, the fact that he revealed his identity to uh, the other female speedster, I, it kind of left me like, okay, but what I really would, I was confused about more so than anything was okay. They focused on Godspeed at issue three at the end of that particular issue, but then he just disappeared. He disappeared. was nowhere, nowhere in issue four. And they mentioned him, but it was like, okay, I'm expecting to see like a full panel. The first page you turn is like Godspeed and his glory and stuff, and then it's like, okay. It, it I kind of felt slighted, man. I mean, I still don't get me wrong. I'm not gonna stop buying the book. Right. I feel slighted. It's like, you know, I'm going I'm to use Matt as an example. His disdain for the filler episodes of The Walking Dead TV show. It's like, you know, how much how much longer y'all going to be traipsing in the woods before, 
y'all find or the 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 um, what's her name um, uh, what's her name's daughter in the barn? Like, okay, how long is it gonna be before y'all realize that she's in the barn? Right. You know. So I mean, as far as it goes, it fell flat to me, man. It, it wasn't as high paced as the first three issues, but hopefully. We'll see Godspeed in issue five. So, what were your thoughts on it? It's pretty much the same. Pretty much the same. Um, I, I, cause and Matt, the reason I brought it up, cause I know you had um, last week we were talking about it. How and you asked me was Godspeed supposed to be in this one? I was like, he's supposed to be. He didn't even show up. I was very let down. But it was still a yeah. good. It's still a good story. It's just I was let down by not seeing that, cause they built up Godspeed to like be that dude in the next issue. So hopefully issue five it'll he'll be there. Right. I think I think what's gonna happen, I'm sorry to cut y'all. No, you good, you good, good, you good, you good. Go ahead, go ahead, you good. Go ahead, I think what's gonna happen, honestly in more of my words, if he is actually showcased in issue five, I can almost guarantee you they're probably gonna have about at least three or four variants showcasing him. So I know for a fact if that's the case, I'm gonna probably pick up whatever variants of God speed that they come out with for that issue. I'm pretty sure whenever they show him or whenever he's in the book prominently, he's probably gonna have a couple of covers dedicated to him. So yeah, I'll pick those up. Well we can say it's not gonna be five because it's only one variant cover for five so far. And that comes uh, out next week. Okay. Yeah. Well, fellas, man, I it's been another great week, man. Great, great picks. Uh, like you said, Flash is coming out next week. We got a lot of other stuff coming out. Uh, we're always, you know, one thing about us is we're always talking off, off the, the record. So, you know, it's no telling what else we'll see. Uh, like I told y'all, check, hop on eBay, man. When you're just cruising around, you know, don't have anything to do, hop on eBay. You, you just be surprised, man. You just have to be patient. You'll find like out 15 bucks, man. Uh, for X Men 100. Now I bet you you never thought you would have been able to get X Men 100 for 15 not, bucks. Not for that cheap, and the shipping was like three bucks. And I ordered it. You know, I told you when I ordered it, mm -hmm. and it was in the mail today. So, I mean, you just you just never know, man. I think TC. I still believe TC got over. You know, he got a, a Civil War cover, man. That was uh, at the time. I think he paid maybe. 20, 25, something for it. And now, man, that thing is like worth a couple of hundred. You know, it's just because, you know, right place, right time. So, you know. But with that, fellas, I think that's it. Next week, top 10 wrestlers of all time. I'm, I am uh, elated to see what everybody's number one is going to be. That's going to be a tough list. Uh, and we've got more rebirth. And uh, we've got Marvel. We're getting closer and closer to uh, Luke Cage. And we're getting closer and closer to the re-release of Iron Man. I mean, excuse me, Iron Fist. And actually, Iron Man. I think that comic book is going to be releasing soon. So we're getting really, really close to some stuff. And I think Civil War should just be about almost ready to, to wind down. Al, go ahead. So I'm glad you mentioned that. Actually, they were, there was an article that was dropped yesterday or maybe Monday. They're actually um, they're extending Civil War. I feel some kind of way about that because they did the same thing to Secret Wars. But uh, from what I understand, Civil War is supposed to actually uh, bleed into the fall. It was supposed to be ending towards the mid the end of the summer. But from what I understand, it's going to be extended sometime to the fall. I heard that it was. A, a combination of um, revamping the story a little bit to uh, additional variant covers being released because you know for each issue of the main story they have released God at least six or seven variants to each particular book. Yeah. So, but yeah, they're they're going to be extending the Civil Wars two story. And one last thing, I'm gonna let you end it off. I meant to do this last week. Um. I'm not the one to not eat crow. Uh, one of our earlier episodes, uh, Matt made a, a mention of a Copper Age comic books, and I kind of scoffed at it. But my man Matt was right. 
uh, Copper Age does exist. Uh, <laughs> and basically what it is, it was a... Um, it's, it's actually considered the modern age, and a lot of comic book historians are wanting to change the name from modern age to copper age, which is kind of bleak because as comic books go on, you go from gold to silver to bronze to copper. Like, what is the next batch of comics going to be called? Like, aluminum foil? So, you know, uh, needless to say, yeah, something <laughs> like cardboard. But Amber. needless to say, I just want to. To um, give a shout out to Matt, um, he was correct. Uh, I was correct, but he was correct in reference to the Copper Age. It's unofficially called the Copper Age, but nonetheless, it's still called the Copper Age. So I, I do concede in that regard, sir. It's all good. The Moon so. Rock Age. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> rock, yeah. Rock Age. Well, Larry Crockett just texted me. I just got his text right here and. Uh, it's, it's saying uh, he's got his his uh, picks, his top his top uh, his top arcade picks. So I just kind of cruise through these. Uh, number ten is uh, Super Smash Brothers. Uh, number nine is Virtua Fighter. Number eight is Ultimate Marvel vs. Capcom three. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> number seven, Mortal Kombat. Number six, Killer Instinct. Number five, Street Fighter Alpha Three. Four, Street Fighter Two Turbo. Three, Soul Calibur. Two is a uh, Tekken. I'm not sure if it's one, two, or three. He just has Tekken. And num and number one is a uh, Street Fighter Two. I saw the Marvelous Capcom Three. I think that's a pretty good list. <laughs> 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 Yeah, Ultimate Mortal Kombat, more, more Marvel Scott Kong 3. That's a disgrace right. before God. Hey, and Larry was an X Factor player. Yeah, so I'm gonna let I'm gonna let <laughs> we'll let him defend that next week when he comes back on. But uh, I think that's it for us tonight, fellas. You know, it's, it's it's always good to see you all. Everybody, thanks for watching. We got quite a few people watching tonight, and uh, we love the feedback. Uh, I've got a couple of inbox messages. People saying they enjoy it. Uh, Jamal Grable. Text me say he was watching tonight. So, uh, Black Stallion, peace out, my man. Good to see you. And uh, once again, another week is in the book. So next week, like I said, we'll we'll be back at it again next Wednesday, and we'll see what everybody else has and what's all coming down the pipe. Uh, Al Rainey, I know you said you're gonna call him out in the thread, but we're gonna call him out in the thread, and you're gonna call him out right here. Go ahead and cut your promo, my man. Oh my God, I'm about to cut a promo. I'm about to cut a promo for the ages. Tony Coleman, why aren't you online tonight, brother? I see Larry Crocker has joined us. Good to see you, Larry. However, Tony Coleman, I'm going to call you out, sucker. You should be on this particular show with us. You know why? <laughs> because you have every version of Black Panther 5 known to mankind. But you know what, Tony? It's cool. It's okay. You want to know why? You want to know why, Tony? Because you will be on the show next week. If I have to come to Macon, Georgia, come to your house, unlock the door, and sit with you by your computer. <laughs> You want to know why, Tony? Because you need to be on this show. Larry needs to be on this show. Vincent, Weldon, Xavier, and Matt needs to be on the show so we can have a round table discussion. Make no mistake, Tony o. Coleman. When I see you again, I will give you dap. But I will not only give you dap, but I might punch you in the stomach because you <laughs> should be here tonight. In closing, I open the challenge. <sighs> Tony O'Coleman, this message is for you. Be here next Wednesday or at SummerSlam, face the consequences. <laughs> oh, shit, SummerSlam. <laughs> so it is written. So it has come to pass. Quote Al. 
Nevermore. Look, it's safe to say we know who his favorite uh, wrestler is. Oh, my God. <laughs> All right, Larry, since you in here late, man, we're going to let you defend that Marvel Scott Con 3, man. Look, man, you know I you know I'm not a uh you know I'm not a cheeser. So to me, Ultimate uh, Marvel vs. Capcom 3 was the best. <laughs> you know, it, 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 to me it balanced out everything. So Oh, you saw the list that I sent you? Yeah, it was, <laughs> yeah, we just got we just read it up before you came on. Yeah. Yeah, Virtual Fighter boy well, on, on Sega Saturn and it showed what the Saturn could do. Well, you know, Virtue Fighter, man, you know, Virtue Fighter, man, let me tell you, man, Virtue Fighter 3, man, Durrell was so damn impossible to beat on that game. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Durrell and then trying to master Akira, no way what happened. But if you can master Akira, you can do some massive damage, man. Hey, oh we, we ain't even knocking the um, Virtue Fighter or any other um, pick on your list. It's just the ultimate, ultimate. <laughs> Marvel versus Capcom 3. Hey, you know, that was the best one. Like I said, you know, it's Marvel like telling me Capcom double. Is I told y'all he was an X Factor fighter. That's, that's like telling me Double Dragon Three was the best fighter <laughs> <of> that series. <laughs> 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 or, 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 or Ultimate Battle Twenty Two Dragon Ball Z is like the best fighting game. Oh, wait, wait, man. I gotta say this on the air, man. I can't believe you did. You know, I was watching the show, man. I can't believe you disrespect the Cyclops like that, man. He was the best fighter on Children of the Atom, but come on, man. Cyclops is the backbone of the X Men universe. Cyclops, man. Let me taste. He said of the universe. Cyclops, bro. Of the universe. Of the X Men. Come on, man. Look at it. Seriously, hold on. I, I seriously, I had. Let me tell you when my respect for Cyclops came. You know when it came, and I hate to say it, but it when came. he died in X three. No, no, no. Uh uh <laughs> That's an abomination. All oh, man. Right. Right. You know what I'm saying yeah. that's when I gained respect for him when he died. Stop. Dang, okay, X. No, when he, <laughs> when he killed Professor X in Avengers vs. X-Men, yeah. um, um, miniseries, at that point, I said Cyclops is the G. Up until that particular point, man, I could kill this for Cyclops, man. It's like they put so much emphasis on him. Remember the whole thing with with, with uh, um, Mr. Sinister, mm. uh, Gene Gray and, and Cyclops are like going to be the... the, the, yeah. the Children, they're they're gonna spawn this new breed of of homo uh, whatever the new mutants and all this kind of crap. And I got tired of hearing that. It's like from the whole from the late eighties when minutes when Sinister showed up up until like the um, the twelve that X Men story called the twelve. It's all they talk about. I got so sick of hearing about. I'm tired of Cyclops. Well, somebody poke this joker's eyes out because I'm tired of seeing. <laughs> well, I tell you what, what they did with him now. They should have dealt with him a long time ago as far right. as you know, a Magneto-type character. They should have taken him and said, well, I'll do whatever it takes to save my race. He should have did that a long time ago. Exactly. I'm going to give you a prime example. We're going to use WWE. John Cena. Cyclops is the John Cena. <laughs> no, 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 no. Oh, yes. Until Avengers vs. X-Men. John Cena needed a heel turn. And like you just said, the Cyclops needed a heel turn many years ago, just like they did with Avengers vs. X. When they did that, A vs. X, and he started to say, hey, look, you know, Professor X, I love you, but this ain't working. You got to get you got to get gone because I got to preserve <laughs> my people. When he did that, my respect for Cyclops went up like through the oh, yeah. But up until then, man, I could, I'll tell you, Cyclops was my least favorite ex. Hey, man, Cyclops back in the day was was soft serve ice cream. Man, stop. Yeah, you know, the it's soft the serve ice cream with X Men. He was on the cartoon, right? He was, he was, he was something to be reckoned with on the cartoon. On tissue paper. He was gelato. Baby, 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 what you said about they should have switched him a long time ago. I mean, it's you know because you you can only tell like Al said. You know, I remember that man going from the eighties. You got sick. It was sickening. You just anything with him on the cover, you just got aggravated with it, man. And then you know now he cool as shit. <laughs> you know, I've always liked Cyclops, man. I thought they, but like I said, I do think they should have made him like Magneto a long time ago and just say yeah, I'm not yeah. a bad guy. 
It's just I'll do whatever it takes to, to save. Professor X, your way isn't working anymore. I need to do something extreme in order to save my race. You you know when I really stopped liking Cyclops when him and Emma Frost were together. Oh no, that was, that, bro, bro, that was a, a key turning point. Yeah, it, and I didn't make it to that turning point because as soon as they got together, I I was like, I'm done. When when I'm he done. turned, he turned away. That was like that was like, hey, <laughs> yeah, that exactly. was beginning of, <laughs> hey man, I'm finna go ahead and do whatever it takes. Hey, what, what, you know, while it's on my mind, you know, we, you know, we, we joke about Antonio and his Black Panther man. Look, Black Panther is going to be something that you throw to and look in their vest. Black Panther man, is they really in humans in Black Panther man? I don't know yep. what it is with, with the Black Panthers man, but Black Panther is getting ready to. Mm-hmm. He's on, up, he's on, he's on up, up a plane, man. I mean, she, that's, hey, that's hey. one of the, that's one of the only hip hop variants I don't have, man. That the one where he got the black album. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, that one was hot. I got that one. Ooh. I mean, the way that they're portraying him right now is 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 like he's bridging the gap, so to speak. You know what I'm saying? It's bringing people that were not into comics, especially black people that were not yeah. into comics, into actually being interested in the comics. And it's it's like for let's just say when we were younger, whatever whatever character. Brought us into comics. That's what Black Panther is doing now, and that's why it's just, just gonna keep on skyrocket. You know what I'm saying? Well, it's um, funny because if you read that um that last issue of Captain America, Sam Wilson, mm-hmm. and this is why I like th- this is why I like Marvel more than DC. Just to put it over the top, to me they're more realistic because now you had Sam Wilson after Rhodey died. They telling Sam Wilson that he said, "I'm not gonna speak at Rhodey's funeral." They said, "Yes, you are. You're Captain America, and more importantly, you're a black man." You know what I'm saying? So they and then everybody in the room was black. You had Storm, you had uh, Captain America, you had um who else you had in the room? Everybody in the room was black, and they were just saying that hey, this is our time to do what we got to do. You know what I'm saying? So I well, thought that was really interesting. Well, Bishop would have been there, but that joke been stuck in space. He <laughs> 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 wanted to come to the room, but you know. <laughs> Because he's following Gambit. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I'll tell you what, man. Another, another, what, what I was saying, thinking about it, man. Another, another uh, comment that you want to get your hands on that you can go, you probably can go find it for like 99 cents. Uh, if it's not rising, which I highly doubt. But uh, I don't know if y'all remember. Do y'all remember the Micronauts? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. You can go grab, go get you some of those, man. I think. I Yes, I'm sorry. No, no, that's okay. Go ahead. I got like the first twenty issues uh, of the old series. Yeah, those things are cheap. Like you could probably pick them up for cheap. And let me tell you something else too, man. And this is just something that I'm gonna stop real right quick. Just for the sake, everybody here loves comics, man. Everybody likes to collect and everything. Um, Matt brought out something last week in reference to some of the old vintage comics. Some of the older '70s comics that you could probably get for for super cheap now, man, would be uh, The Deadly Hands of Kung Fu with Shang-Chi, uh, Shogun Warriors, uh, Godzilla had a, 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 a book back in the day with Marvel, Rom Space Knight, um, who else? Uh, Nova, uh, some of the old Defender stuff. It's some of that stuff before, you know, Marvel rumors that to do a particular movie. Pick some of that stuff up, man. I had the first run. Well, the, it was only 20 issues of Shogun Warriors. But, you know, there used to be a toy line back in the day. You know, and I picked those up for like a dollar a piece. You know, just for the, just the sake of just having something of nostalgic purpose. So, I tell you another one. You saw the Hulu deal that Marvel just did for the Runaways. Right. Yeah. yeah. I'm confused about that, though. The, I'm, I'm glad they did it, but I'm confused because if I'm not mistaken, didn't Marvel and Netflix just sign this big deal? Yeah, that, that kind of threw me too. Yeah, it kind of threw me. Like, if they signed that deal, why would you sign them on with Hulu when they just did that to try to kill Hulu? I'm, I'm, I'm happy they did it, but I'm lost. I think because of the fact that this is just a... Um, limit. It's like a what, six or seven run episode thing. Right. Also, man, you got to see, man, Marvel has a lot of properties. You know, it's a lot of stuff that the, the, the average casual um, person 
person doesn't know. You know, everybody knows about Spider Man and and mm-hmm. Thor and Iron Man, but don't too many people know about Black Bolt, like Matt was talking about with the Inhumans or uh, Nova or Dark Hawk or you know a lot of those Machine Man, you know characters like that. So Marvel has a lot of properties, man, that they're really if you think about it. Like Matt said last week with Hulk and Dagger, man, who would have thought Hulk and Dagger would have a TV show? Right. You know, on, you know Disney, XD, or whatever show uh, channel is coming on, you know? I got one for you, too, Al. Uh, uh, another one, you know, especially with Luke Cage taking off. Uh, Black Goliath, man. That's one. He got murked in the war, though. Bill Foster, man, he died. Man, I ain't gonna talk about how he died, man. <laughs> don't nobody stay dead in Marvel. <laughs> Well, don't know about to stay dead in comics, period. Yeah, you know, that's why. That's, but you know what, Xavier? And it's, and, you know, Xavier just hit on something. But you know, that's exactly why I, I didn't get really too worked up about the whole Bruce Banner because I he, he'll be back at some point. He's gonna roll back into the universe. They'll go get some kind of orb and bring him back with Thor's hammer or some shit. And, and, and I think they should. I think they should leave him, and I think they should also leave the original Wolverine. I think they should leave both of those dead for a long time. The only reason I say that is because to me, Wolverine is one of the only true characters that had a beginning, middle, and an end. A true beginning, middle, and yeah. end. And I think they need to leave him there for a minute and kind of let H23 take that mantle for a minute. And then if they decide 20 years from now or something to, to bring him back, bring him back. But I think right now they should let him stay dead. I got I got a question for you in the, in the world of um, Marvel and because I... I I'm not all up on it like I used to be. Is Dakin, is he still alive or did they kill him? Nah, he's dead. See, see, I liked him and then I have nothing to read. Without Wolverine, there's no story for him. Yeah, you still got H23. Yeah, but they they weren't connected like that, man. They had Dakin as some kind of bisexual. Uh, um, the Green Lantern thing. Right, they had that he could attract both sexes and he could do this, he could do that, and I was like, man, just go on off this man. He's yeah, fair to take me too, man. That dude, he <laughs> on drugs at one time too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that's that's how they ended that series that he was yeah. on, on drugs. So I was like, man, just they didn't have anywhere to go with him. Didn't he have a healing factor like mm-hmm. Wolverine? Yeah, but he was on drugs. So what was the point of him being on drugs? He was taking some, some, some kind of. Yeah, it was, you know, they had that mutant enhancing drug at one point that it was, it was a bad storyline, a very bad storyline. That, that's like them vampires snorting blood and Blade too. <laughs> <laughs> and, then, and then, you know, you know what, speaking of vampires, man, I'm glad you said that because I was just getting ready to bring this up. You talk about old characters that people, you know, people that fly under the radar. Morbus is somebody that flies completely under the yeah. radar. Yeah. yeah. That's somebody that you definitely want to take. Get some of his early first Morbis Morbus is like the first Spider-Man cartoon. Yeah, that's yes, that's definitely one that you you know. I've I've seen in a couple of respects. Uh, <laughs> right. <started. laughs> uh, and then then I just saw I saw just saw they announced somebody else for that Spider Man movie. I can't remember who it was, what, what villain it was. But they announced oh, another. Woodbine. He's playing yeah, he's the Shocker. Yeah, yeah, the Shocker. The, the whole Sinister Six. Yeah, the Shocker. So if you can, and you can actually find that man. Believe it or not, man, that is. You you, you you can find it under 100. Were we I talking about it. that on last week where he's being played by Black Dude? Yeah, I think we did talk about it last mm-hmm. week. But, yeah, that's that's one that you definitely want to get. And uh, Scorpion, man, you know, it's a lot of – you know, the thing about the, the amazing thing, and Al, I don't know if you saw that link I sent you Sunday, but the guy was, the guy, the guy was talking about it. And uh, the amazing thing is that a lot of Spider-Man villains fly under the radar. And you can get them, uh, you know. Of course, you know Doc, uh, you know Venom, Carnage. Those are gonna be the ones that's just a uh, pain to get. But you can always go out and get like the lizard, lizard, uh, uh, um, Shocker, of course, Scorpion, you know, Vulture. Sandman, Vulture, uh, Hobgoblin, you know, Rhino, Rhino. Uh, Mysterio. I've, seen, yeah. Mysterio. I, I've seen the comedian. I've seen the first appearance of comedian at just about every comic book store I've been to. <laughs> so I mean, I mean, like I said, you can go out and get you some of these first appearances. There's some of these uh, what what some people would call second rate villains. I mean, 
they're going. I, I don't see Homecoming being the last Spider Man movie. And so you have no. to kind of start. No. You have to kind of start looking at once the Sinister Six is out of the way. Well, who are they going to go to next? Right. So that's why I say it kind of start picking up those uh those old Spider Man uh, villains and then start picking those up. And, you know, put them in your in your stash. And uh, that's pretty much about it. Yeah. Man, you know uh, Larry, how far this series can go with all the different symbiotes out there. Yep. I mean, you got it's it's a long Spider Man. If it's done right, man, that can. But I mean, you you just got so so many they're avenues. About, you can take. Uh, we're doing a new Venom now, aren't they? They talking about giving the symbiote to somebody else, and I know they talking about giving it to Deadpool real soon. With, like the actual. Well, he's already Venom had one symbiote. Yeah, yeah, I guess that's what they're referencing, like a whole mini series with him having uh the symbiote outside of that Deadpool Secret Wars, Secret Wars. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, if you go look at Amazing Spider-Man, if y'all go hop on, uh, hop on eBay, type in Amazing Spider-Man 15. Uh, Iron, I think it's, I think this is the one with Iron, uh, Iron Spider. But on the cover, it has Black Cat in the symbiote suit. It's a badass cover. Mm. Yeah, and I think that happened in, in, in the last issue. And then, uh, speaking of Spider-Man, you know, just, just coming to me as we talk. They actually get ready to do uh, the clone conspiracy, so that's supposed to be coming up. It will be the next Spider major Spider Man uh, story arc, uh, which should start. I want to say starts at issue sixteen, if I'm not mistaken. Somebody's supposed to die, and they well, have. I thought they said they pulled the head with Dead No More first, though, right? Or was that after going? going to be after that. I think that's after that. It might be before. I might be wrong. If anybody's watching, hit me up. Let me know if I'm right. If I'm wrong, I, I want to say I think it's afterwards. Somebody's died. I know that. Somebody's they had announced it because on the cover, uh, he's standing over a grave, but they don't know whose grave it is. So somebody's died, and then they're gonna go into the clone conspiracy, the the, the figure out who's the real Spider Man or whatever. So that's supposed to be the next major story arc. So and and there's a new and a new villain who was introduced in the last Spider Man issue that came out. I think name is Itsy Bitsy or something like that. So. <laughs> So that's something that you can go go snag up, Larry. You been you been over to Comics Plus, man? You go you go hunting today? Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. No. What you what you got today, man? What you yeah, got I over? Got a regular regular haul, man. You know, just get get your X Men Civil War. Got both covers. Uh, like you, I got the all new Wolverine. You know, that's my favorite character right now. So I love that they got her B Note Captain America on the cover. <laughs> the Ultimates. Had to get that one. Basically, all my Civil War two tie-ins: Captain uh, Sam Wilson, Captain America, uh, The Fallen, was the Hulk, uh, Spider Woman. Just let y'all know, I'm not gonna read this one. It's just gonna go in the bag, and you know, it's just it's bought it because it's a tie-in. <laughs> <laughs> Uncanny Avengers this is one of my favorites too. Uh, Extraordinary X Men. That's an old one. I missed that uh, number five. I didn't get it when it came out, so I, they had it. So I snagged it up. And the Guards of War. I got both covers of uh, Civil War Two tie in. And uh, I ended up at Oxford last week, and I just picked up the rest of uh, the, the hip hop variants that I didn't have. So, oh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, because Oxford, man. Have, have you ever been to Oxford before, Al? I have not. Yeah, Oxford, man. Oxford. The cool thing about Oxford is they've got a wall dedicated to variants, so you can yeah. just kind of walk up there and get what you want. Now, now don't go up there on a Wednesday, man, because they have shit thrown all over the place, man. It's you know, it's it, it, it's like a damn landmine in there trying to find stuff because they got stuff packed, stacked on top of each other. But yep. If you go up there like on like a Saturday or Sunday, or whatever, you can pretty much kind of maneuver your way around. Cool store, man. If you hadn't been, you need to go. We need to make that a road trip one Saturday. Yeah, I, Oxford's a cool place. Uh, I, I kind of prefer Bungie over Oxford, but, you know, Oxford probably got some stuff that um, Bungie wouldn't get just because on, they're on a bigger level. Yeah. Yeah, and they order more copies. Yeah, I'm, I'm, up for, I'm up for a road trip, Uh, not this Saturday, but next Saturday, man. Let me know, man. Let me know. Larry, what Bungie you go to? The one right there at McDonald's? Man, I stay right down the street. Yeah, yeah, I, you know, I stopped through there from time to time, man, to see what old, old boy got. Yeah, yeah, you gotta hit me up, man. He's a comic book guy, what I call it, though. Oh, yeah, yeah, he's a cool dude. 
Yeah, we had beef at first, but we squashed it. <laughs> <laughs> you have boot with the owner of the store, man. Man, I tell y'all, man, I can't tell you. Hey, I, I tell you what, <laughs> hey, 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 look at that. I tell you what. But Bungie, Bungie got his, but I damn sure got mine. <laughs> <laughs> I got mine. <laughs> he he going to have a price tag of about five hundred and twenty-five dollars yeah. on this stuff, though, for real. Yeah. yeah, he'll slap, he'll slap the price tag. If he, if I show him mine, I guarantee he this this is about eight hundred easy right there, boy. Oh yeah, that's right, how he right. had a uh, he had a whole one eighty-one up on the wall, man. Six hundred dollars. Yes, sir. I already know. I asked him. I said I just walked out the store. Like, okay. <laughs> I see you tomorrow. But you know what, man? I was God, on I eBay one, before we went on, and I've been I just been watching it just for the hell of it ever since Xavier told us that story about that sixty dollar one eighty one. I just been watching to see what what it, what everybody's paying for. It. And I was on there earlier, man, before the show came on, and that was that was a bid at eighteen hundred dollars, and it was twenty five bids for Hulk one eighty one. Absolutely insane. But man. it's like the post we had earlier. I don't understand the reason why 181 is the real one everybody wants. When 180 was on the on the final page, you get the full Wolverine. Right. You know what I'm saying? That to me, that's the first appearance. Like, why is everybody killing themselves over 181? Because it's like on the, the cover. Yeah, it, exactly. And it's like the guy said in that same thread is where the you know I think CGC has a lot to do with that with, because on the slab it says first full appearance but it's yeah. just like earlier when uh i don't know if you saw that but when it went out uh with, with, you know with, with this right here people go after the other issue yeah of x-men because they see gambit on the cover but people don't realize that gambit actually makes his appearance in this one right here mm-hmm. i i hold up cam i think me personally i think cameos are really the first appearance of the, of the uh of the person it's kind of like with carnage I think. You know. well, Go ahead, Al. You, you know. oh, okay, I go ahead. Yeah, I'm here. Okay. I was going to say it's kind of like the whole um, Secret Wars Eight, the first appearance of um, Spider-Man in the black costume. Technically, yeah. I can't remember which Spider-Man it was, but somehow or another. There was a Spider-Man book that was released before Secret Wars ended, and in that Spider-Man book, he had the the black costume. So even though Secret Wars Eight is the first formal appearance of him being in that suit, it's not the actual first appearance yeah. of him being in that suit in print. Yeah. But you know, more people <laughs> will, will go for the, the Secret Wars Eight because it was the first appear where he actually donned the suit. So. Yeah, you know, figure. And yeah. it's not the first true appearance of Venom. It's just the first appearance of the black suit. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Exactly. So, I mean, when it comes down to first appearances, man, I usually generally try to find a cameo, first cameo, first appearance, or either the second appearance. And in most cases, sometimes the second appearance is well, not in most, but in at least about thirty five percent. The second appearance is actually worth more. So you know, it's just it's just you know, it all depends on how you want to go about doing it. But I, I totally agree with you on that 180, man. I, I personally think 180 is really worth, worth more than 181. It's just that, you know, the, the uh, it's been pushed that 181 is the, right. the, the most important. And I, and I must admit, I've got the poster hanging up on my wall back there. <laughs> <laughs> but it is a badass poster, man. It is, you know, a good-ass piece of artwork for its time. Man, that, that, first, that first Wolverine costume, man, was terrible. Boy. It was garbage, man. Absolute horse shit. Had ears. I was like, what yeah. in this? Yeah. His claws look like, like bent spoons. <laughs> <laughs> but they, you know, they personally, weren't expecting him to be as big as he was. What's that say again, Zay? I said they weren't expecting him to be as big as he was or is. Yeah. yeah I mean, look at, the, look, at the, look at the lead villain in that issue. When to go? Yeah. When to go? <laughs> What's that time you seen Wendigo? Exactly. But, but I like the Brian go, go ahead, Al. Yeah, I'm just gonna say this. These would be one of my favorite characters till Marvel kept him out and I start hating him too. So Oh, I, I Wolverine is Wolverine. It, 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 they doing the same thing with Deadpool. Like the Deadpool that you get now, it's like it's nothing like the the Deadpool from New Mutants ninety eight or or you know, it's it's like 
you went from straight mercenary to crazy hero. Your mm -hmm. comedy act. Yeah. I mean, uh, you know, I personally, me, me personally, I, I prefer, I like the old school Wolverine with the, with the Brian, with the Brian outfit. To be honest with you, that's the one I like. I like Wolverine, man. Like I said, I think they gave him a full fledged beginning, middle, and ending, and I think they ended it just right to leave him where he is. It just it he had nowhere else to go. He went from loner to finding the team to leading the team to being everything the X Men ever wanted to leaving. You know what I'm saying? So I mean, I think that's the best way you could leave it. Yeah, I just I was so pissed off when they kept changing his origin story. That's that's when I really that's another reason why I start reading a lot of the comics too because the whole James Howlett thing and then going into he was born with the claws and all of that other stuff I was like I'm I'm done I, just that was one of the best parts of it man it was a hero who we had no idea really right where he came from right you know? like and that was the mystery of him for so long that he, his memory was messed up that. Maybe this is how I got here. Maybe this is how I got here. And then when they finally came up with the James Howlett Bone Claws theory, well, you know, the Bone Claws theory started back in Wolverine 75 when Magneto stripped it from him. Like, I was guess I was born. Yeah. So, you know. Yeah, if you can find the old, if you can find, let me tell you, man, if you can go find the old Wolverine uh, 1 through 3, uh, the first one, go, go get it, man. I didn't realize until recently that, uh, I believe, I think it was Frank Miller did the artwork on that, if mm -hmm. I'm not mistaken. And uh, that that's kind of starting to get, gain some traction as far as value, because for a while there, Wolverine comics didn't hold any value. Uh, you know, and now it's starting to, yeah, but I see you shaking your head, Xavier. Yeah, it didn't they, hold they any did. value, man. They we did. oversaturated, man. You know, they, they he went from being a loner in Madripoor to an a X-Man, an Avenger, uh yeah, Civil War agent, um, everything you right, anything possible in the Marvel Universe, he did it. Man, Wolverine was in like 18 different books, like how in the world <laughs> can one man be on all these teams and fight all these people? I, that's what really turned me off because, like you said, Larry, the same thing they're doing with Deadpool, it's an oversaturation, like, I like Wolverine during his like the um the the gym the gym league running mm -hmm. before they actually did the um they split the X Men into two teams and he was going through Magic Four and he started he went by patch and he was going against hand and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. So that's when I really liked it because they, they they gave him some substance, but just because he was a popular character, man, don't put him in all these teams. And they doing the same thing with that fool. It's like, come on, man, for real, this is ridiculous. I was glad when they killed. You gotta milk the cow, baby. You gotta milk the cow. They doing it. They did it with Spider Man too. Yeah, you gotta milk the cow. I understand that. I mean, and, and from a business standpoint, that makes sense. But from a, a, a comic standpoint, it's like, dude, man, really, Wolverine. This is like they're gonna eventually say that all those Wolverines were actually clones of the original Wolverine. <laughs> And, and he's gonna be wearing the Infinity Gauntlet on his left hand. Yeah. And no, he's gonna, gonna be bursting to the Animanium. Oh. And he's gonna have the Agumato in a in a on a Duke chain. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, you know they did something like that with Saber Tooth, which I hated. When you thought he finally killed Saber Tooth and cut his head off, then they were like Romulus made a clone of Saber Tooth. You were like, really? <laughs> I, I just had to do it again. <laughs> We'll save it. Too. I just had to do it again. <laughs> well, Larry, let me, let me ask you, man. We usually do, we usually uh, do this every time we close. So, what are you looking for, my man? What what are you, what's on your radar for the upcoming week? Man, after you showed me that Deadpool, that that that's like the last one I'm missing. That Deadpool number two, that that uh, hip hop variant. Yeah. I looked at it, man. Like you said, it's going for anywhere from a hundred to two fifty online, man. But that's like 
only yeah, they only, they only released the album. Like, what the hell? They only released like a hundred. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, talking about that vanilla ice cover. Yeah, yeah. man. I, yeah. I, I think when they made, it, they didn't think it was gonna take off, and it, it's one of the most sought after ones you can get. Now I, I yeah. look every comic store I go to. I, your boy got one up there. Your boy up there got one. Bungie, he got one. Oh, he ain't had last time I asked him for it. He, 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 he had it. stole it. Cause I saw it when we went up there. When I first went up there, the first time with you, had, he had it. So he, he probably got some chump to clean him out. Yeah, he, he ain't have it. So, so it, that, that's really the only thing I'm looking for, man. I'm looking forward to the Death of X miniseries so I can see what happened to Cyclops. <laughs> and I want him, you know, knocked off. <laughs> so, but I want to see what happened in these eight months that made uh, the humans so mad that they they went and killed my boy. Hey, Al, what you what you what you what's on your radar, man? Like I said, man, that Master of the Universe and the Tummy Cats, that's really what's on my radar right now. Um, I'm looking forward to the death of X. I mean, because it's an X Men title, I'm gonna pick it up. Um, Larry, I commend you, man, for picking up all those um, those um, tie-ins, tie man. Because I can't do it, bro. Like when I do like the like Secret Wars and Original Sin, I just pick up the main book because a lot of that other stuff, uh, I ain't really got that much time in the day to read all this stuff, man. <laughs> so. I pick up the main ones, and I will tell you this though, Larry. I did find out that a lot of times when those tie-ins come out, um, if you pick up the main books, sometimes you know when you go back and try to find back issues, they end up dropping in price because you know they're offshoots to the main mm-hmm. title. So I might just go back and pick up. I, I tried to do that with um, Secret Wars because I picked up X Men '92 and um, the Year of the Future Past. It is. The years of Future Past was pretty good, too. But I kind of drew the line because they had so many different one-shots of the series and yeah. tied in the Secret Wars. It's like, man, I will be broke trying to find all these books. I got to pay my car notes, son. <laughs> yeah. Hey, let me ask you this, Al. With 93 books? Yes. Yeah, yeah. I, I only got, like, three out of that, out of that whole run. I got five. Well, I got a Spider-Man. I got a Captain America. And then I got a... Uh, uh, it was Civil War number five, which is the one I showed y'all last week, that, that sketch cover. And uh, that was it, man. I, there's no way I was going to try to go buy all those covers. I, I didn't even buy all the covers for this this round. I'm going to tell you this, though, Al. If you, if you hadn't picked up the X-Men version of uh, the X-Men tie-in, it's real good, man, because it's setting you up for the death of X because Magneto going crazy, man. He's going to try to kidnap Ulysses, so it's actually pretty. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So. Now, he ain't going to go crazy like he did in the Ultimatum, is he? No, nah, I don't think he'll go crazy like that, but, you know, he got his own team, of course, and Storm got her team, and, you know, they showing the divide between the two, and uh, at the end, he, you know, he went and found Rachel Gray, and uh, they brought Rachel Gray back to be on his team, and they're they going to infiltrate Adelon next issue. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, <laughs> hey, do, do you, you, I heard you say Original Sin. Do you have the Black Panther cover of Original Sin? I might, man. I'm not sure. I, I I didn't really, I didn't really jump on the variants, man. At that time, uh, I might or might not. You know, sometimes that store for animes and escape when they had books, they'll have the variants. And if I didn't get, if I couldn't get like the first print, I would get the variant. I just check and see. Yeah, if you got that, man, I think that uh, uh, I've seen that go for three hundred, three four hundred on eBay consistently. I mean, that's a strong, uh, a strong uh, buy on uh, eBay. Exactly. What's you over there? What's you over there? Uh, what's on? What's on your plate, man? What you? What you looking at, man? Um, right now I'm just looking at getting those variants. The it's two that I'm really looking at getting. Um, uh, it's the Deadpool, not Deadpool, Daredevil two pop variant, and that uh, X Men De La Soul, the one that Al showed. Those are the main two that I'm looking at getting. Uh, I am looking, I am waiting on the, as Al said, the He-Man and Thundercats. I've got the uh, regular variant. Well, the thing is with the variants with that is it's going to be a, a gamma. It's, a and, it's going to be an A and B. So I guess it's whichever they pick, and that's what you get. So whatever I get, I'm satisfied with. Uh, I've got uh, Betty Boot, uh, number one, that's on the way. Uh, I've got... Uh, Moonshine, I think it's Moonshine, Moonshine. Uh, 
Kingsway West number one is one that is is uh, I'm, I've got on the radar. Uh, and there's another one. I, I got a list. I, I, I can't think of, but I got a lot of indie 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 books coming. So I, I've kind of been on this indie kicks. Uh, Animosity is uh, Animosity three two sold out before I could even order. And once once our uh, once our time actually sold out in four minutes on midtime. Two. So I mean it was sold out before it even got on that book. So well I think that's gonna pretty much do it for us, man. I think uh, I think Larry's upstairs taking care of some business. So we're gonna go ahead and get ready to shut this thing down. Thanks everybody for tuning in this week. Next week we'll be back with more uh, comment hall, more top ten. Uh, I see Larry coming down the stairs. Larry, next week we're doing our top ten wrestlers. So make sure you have your top ten wrestlers of all. Oh time. yeah, I, I I heard that man when I was in, in the grocery store, man. I said, I already look, man. I'm already ready for that. Yeah, we'll save it for next week. Save I'm it. Already ready for that, yeah, man. Save it for next week. Look, and that's all you need to see. No, you say sorry. this right here. You know what you said? That's your number one right there? No, no. <laughs> about the original. The original. So, so we'll uh, we'll get that going next week, man. I'm looking forward to it. Thanks for everybody who is watching. Thanks for everybody who is inboxed and chatted and, and subscribed to the YouTube channel. Uh, hopefully, man, you know, one of my long-term things that I would like to see us do with this, man, is to actually broadcast from a comic book store. Uh you know, I'm thinking that's something. You know, I'll talk with Will and see if he, we can pull it off. Comics Plus or whatever, and if we can pull it off. That'll be cool. Uh, maybe get him on talk about some 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 spec stuff or whatever. But uh, I'm thoroughly enjoying it. I thoroughly enjoyed the show. Um, having a blast, man. Having a blast doing it. So, all right. With that, Al Rainey, Larry Crocker, Xavier Randall, myself, Matt Odom. Everybody, thanks for tuning in. May the force be with you.